All right, so today I'm here at Superior Scenics Layout. Uh, special shout out to them, of course, for sponsoring the channel. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and I'm working on this SDL 39 in the new Proto Throttle. <clears throat> if you saw the last video, um, basically starting over with the throttle and with the locomotive fresh out of the box, um, minimal programming, just programming the road number and then getting that set up to actually function on the layout which just involves uh, setting the throttle ID, which is set to E, because I have four proto throttles now, um, and I want them not to interact with each other too much um, or have conflicting addresses. So here's the gold throttle I talked about in my other video. I do have all the different face plates available, not the aux plates, but the colors anyways. Um, this one's completely set up to do everything. All the bells and whistles, honest to goodness. Um, with the alerter and everything. The red one is just set to forward, reverse, and uh, F0 for the headlights, front and rear. So either one, either knob turned to bright headlights, front or rear is going to activate the headlights for F0. I have not set up the class lights or anything. The button um, is momentary, so as soon as you let go, it turns off. So you cycle through two class lights instead of just the one color. Um, so you basically get green and off. Now, I brought it here basically to test. I haven't really run this locomotive a whole lot other than my home layout for a few moments. Uh, but I wanted to get it out, stretch its legs a little bit, so I was running some intermodal. But I want to go over some of the differences about why you might want to consider keeping your thro proto throttle mostly stock or putting the beans to programming everything. So there's some pros and cons. Um, and I'm just going to kind of go over those real quickly. And then we'll just do some uh, basic operations with both so you can kind of see that firsthand. So, first of all, uh, to just leave the proto throttle the way it is, it's minimal effort. I mean, the cost up front is, um, I wouldn't say extreme. Um, I might say, I wouldn't say enormous either. Um, but it is there. It's a significant cost to say the least, plus $100 for the receiver. And then, of course, your engine. And of course, I've got the museum quality locomotive, so it's a bit more than your usual DCC and sound. But you could go pick up um, a nice Loke sound or a tsunami decoder. All the same um, for like a Walters mainline or something for $200 or less. So that option is still available to you. Now, what's nice is it's just as simple as turning it on, setting your direction, and away you go. And there's no braking to be concerned about. There's no momentum to be concerned about other than what little bit comes from the factory. Um, the headlights are going to come on um, with F0. You don't have to worry about your ditch lights. Um, the beacon is a different function that this is not set up to activate. Uh, later on when you go programming, um, to get this to work better with this and get more out of our experience, that'll be set up to start up with a locomotive. Now talk about the Milwaukee Road here this has been set up to activate all the functions and for that to get the best experience out of this combination that we can so we're going to turn this guy on <clears throat> without activating the sound which it may come on automatically um, but basically if we go two speed steps forward oh sorry it's a neutral got to remember to put it back in the gear Hmm. Might need to actually fire this guy up. It's the wrong road number. Cut. Okay. So we're back with the gold throttle here. Um, the locomotive was different than what I was, thought it would be. Um, I didn't check that. That's my fault. So. <clears throat> So we've got a reverser going in forward here. We're just going to throttle up a little bit. There we go. And now it's going to coast for a ways because we've got all the momentum that we can get in this thing. Got some dirty track here. Well, basically, <clears throat> and this thing hasn't been running in a while either. So that's notch three. If we let off, it's going to coast a ways, so we need to activate the brake. Same thing in reverse.
there's a lot more momentum on this guy. So, to get her down, apply the brake, and there. Also, to control the headlights with this, we need to turn on front and rear completely independently. Um, there goes the sound. So, bell is going to be the same on both of them, horn's the same on both of them, and then this guy I've set up for the class lights, so I don't think you guys can see it here, but you can see here this is latching for F5, <clears throat> and this one you can see is momentary, so it's only active when I press it, and as soon as I let go, it sends the command again to turn it off. So latching and momentary. And you can change that into programming where I showed you in another episode. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the last episode actually, about changing that. And you just go into config functions and you keep cycling with either of these until you get some momentary or latching for that function. So one big difference so the big difference is lighting is automated. Um, this one you don't have the braking um, or the momentum set up. This one you do, this one I do. Um, there's a lot more to do with this throttle, the way it's set up, than there is with this one. This is very simple, very easy to start with, very friendly for a beginner until you figure out you want to use a brake, you want to use more momentum. Um, this guy's set up for that already. So the next step is going to be setting up the lighting, uh, setting up the sounds, the momentum. Um, I'm going to dim the lights on this, set up the beacon to go and work uh, upon startup things like that. I want to set these to latching, um, configure the lighting on here a little bit more, and I want to change some of the CVs on the locomotive to tune the way I want to use it, and we'll get into those in different episodes. That's not good. I'll have to check that out. This might have been dropped at some point. So, until the next episode, you guys take care, and that's two different ways to look at the proto throttle.